and you can show the initial territories on the Varen map of what these particular nodes have governance over, or, or their zones of influence, as we like to call them, right? Okay. As the simulation of this begins to advance and nodes begin to expand their territory and they begin to um, take over nearby nodes as a result of their of their growth, uh -huh. um, you start to see these power level, these ratings um, that are applied here on, on specific nodes and that determines what type of takeover power it has and, and what it uh, pushes back against. This also simulates uh, sieges, it also simulates events, so each of these nodes will have a health ticker. When that health ticker is impacted, it'll stop gaining power or... Wow, this is complex. No wonder they say the node system is the most, like, the, the biggest thing that they're revolutionizing in the game. Kind of insane simulation, yeah. I, I totally agree. It's crazy to see the dominance that the biggest metropolis node has over an area and how hard it must be to overthrow that metropolis and just how many nodes there are too there's so many nodes in this map like it'd be cool to open the in-game map and see it evolve over time and see the sort of vas vassalship that nodes have over each other Certain events can affect a node by disabling certain services, disabling buildings. If players don't respond to that horde of zombies that have, you know, come out of the uh, out of the nearby ravine, um, mm -hmm. then those zombies can attack stables. They can attack service buildings and 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 prevent uh, particular types of quests or um, activities and services from from happening until it's repaired right so <clears throat> it simulates that it simulates the sieges if, if a particular um, node has a has a certain frequency that's set where um, uh, we want to see randomization of how nodes get affected by sieges wait how let me go back a little bit so look at this purple node right here the blue nodes about to take it um, over uh, we want to see randomization of now how nodes get affected by sieges. Um, this sometimes one's holding they'll be out destroyed purple. in the simulation. Sometimes they'll be um, have disabled services again, similar to an event, because they didn't succeed necessarily at sieging the node, but they did succeed at disabling some of the buildings as part of that siege. Um, so, <clears throat> a lot of these, you know, this representation does show 111 nodes as part of the uh, as part of this particular simulation. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure what the tick frequency is on this video. Um, it might be something on the magnitude of like every second is um you know probably 12 to 24 hours um so over time you know you start seeing these larger um um node systems building up to eventually where you might see you know cities and metropolises after some period of time okay. um, and what this does you know what this allows uh, the design team to to kind of Whoa, what do is going from a on? tools perspective as they simulate this this idea of how the world is going to progress is <clears throat> it gives an opportunity to kind of see strange happenings or something that we couldn't necessarily predict uh, but was a a possible outcome based on the variables present um, that players could potentially simulate as or excuse me it simulates what players could potentially do as well when the game uh -huh. goes live um, and that might include things like splitting up a particular zone of influence across a waterway right having having your territory expand out to an island or across continents um, <clears throat> you know these are these are the types of things that we want to see uh, players do eventually obviously but uh, this this tool provides the design team the opportunity this to see right it here is, repetitively was, was huge and over until a fast period it. of time so they see these different types of outcomes the the chat is excited and wow. they, they are concerned that we're sharing too much information publicly oh no 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 no, no. that's okay don't, don't wow. worry about that yeah, it's, this uh, is really cool <laughs> There's a there's a whole side panel here that actually you can't see that I asked Margaret this morning to yeah I was to, like how am I gonna to hide take this off. <laughs> yeah and uh, you know the side panel has a lot of data points that are collected and the weighted values of these particular data points that that nodes can exhibit through you know development through player activity through you know whatever um, and again like these this node right are here is huge of the particular nodes but they do show what that interaction what that what that almost territory like um um you know politicking will be between nodes yeah, um, the persistence mm. and how it will yeah. evolve over time wow you would have to you have to be like an expert politician to like 
understand the relationships of your server, every server is going to be totally different. So, yeah, that's that's crazy though. That is really crazy. Um. Uh, what is the blue thing that overtook the green thing, actually? So, each one of these little s squares on this map are a node. So, like a town or a village. A metropolis. Something like that. Uh, when a node grows really big, it takes over its surrounding nodes, as in it makes them vassals to it. And so these, like, surrounding villages serve the big, the big city. So this is just the politics of how nodes take over each other. If there's like a raid, it totally wipes out the node system and then the land is all up for grab. Like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a risk. I don't know if you've ever played the risk game, but that's what this reminds me of is like, a node builds up power and it can expand until it gets to a point where it's like too big to cover everything and then things come and take over parts of it. That's sort of what it reminds me of. Um, how, how come it's, it'd be spreading? That's cool. That's the cool thing with the freedom and multiplayers. Yeah, I think that's why this game is so uh, revolutionary is because the players are going to be able to dictate the outcomes of a server. Every single server is going to play completely differently because the towns are going to form relationships over each other and towns are going to be bigger or smaller in different servers. And it also locks out raids. So like some raids or dungeon content won't be playable until a certain town hits a certain level of power. So every server is going to have a completely different set of raids. Every server is going to have a completely different like PvP Guild War experience. And I think that's what makes it so cool. Yep, so the colors represent the influence of a certain uh, node. Yeah, so for example, this blue node it has the big blue circle compared to the li medium blue, the little green, the tiny yellow. Like this blue has all of these nodes in its vassal ship. Like it, I don't know if it taxes all the nodes. I don't know how it will actually function in game, like what the big what the big village gets from all the little villages. It'll probably be like some sort of tax system. So this is right here, but it doesn't have control over this like orange node. It's like just hunkered down and it's little and it's like defending against the blue. I don't know, it's kind of cool. And then there's these this huge area. It makes me wonder, can a super dominant guild or something take over like a whole continent? and make it all under one node vassal ship. I don't know how that would work, but is that possible? And because you see some of these and they're getting pretty big. Tax money, respect, yeah. I don't know, that's a really, that's a really cool and interesting system. Yeah, so she just clicked on this one and selected it. Look how big its area of influence is. So if you buy something over here, you might be taxed at the rate that this place dictates. Players do, and how each of the servers does different things too. Because oh yeah, your guys' actions on different like there's. Yeah, so she's going through and clicking on different ones. Maybe like a 0.01 percent chance that two servers could have the same situation, but very unlikely, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, obviously, as we've spoken about many times since the inception of, of Ashes and, mm -hmm. and the node system is the cool... Oh my gosh, look how big this one got all of a sudden. It's ginormous. That's crazy. ...component of having different servers experience different things. The way that content is gated behind world development mm -hmm. is also an interesting method by which this content gets trickled out to the player base based on their you know, decisions, essentially, um, <clears throat> and how that affects the story overall, right? That's that's the big appeal to Ashes. That's what we are doing differently than a lot of MMOs, you know, that have come before us. Um, and, you know, what that means is we have to create... <laughs> I like how this one's named Iceland. That's pretty funny. ...an abnormally larger amount of curated content so that those decisions from the player mean something um, and just aren't 
you know, obfuscated behind the pl player driven, you know, um, quote unquote terminology. Um, yeah, that's what I was just saying. You want to have before. complimentary curated uh, content that that exists and makes the world feel reactionary to the players. Um, Which is and definitely, that's, a, you know, a hard thing to achieve. Um, I think yeah. that I was even having a chat with some of the other designers about that and like how quests are going to work and how those systems Absolutely. are going to be integrated mm -hmm. into the node system. It's very intriguing um, and a lot of discussion. Yeah, I just had a Design I just had a three-hour meeting yesterday on quests, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you know what we what we took out of Alpha One, and and obviously you know the outstanding feature work that wasn't completed by Alpha One, but you know doubling down on those designs um, and providing that as the goal for Alpha Two is to actually implement that more modular reactionary type. Um, questing systems that <clears throat> you know are less about go do X, you know A B and C and come mm -hmm. back and, and chat with me and more about how like when you're on that path and the world is actively developing you know how that changes what your objectives are what your destination is what the or you, you know like adversary something and you're like oh I interact yes. with this crate and now like oh I have the option to either take this to who it belongs to because it does have a label on it or I can just mm. take it for myself but if someone catches me trying to sell it or something maybe there's reactions right like those kind of oh. makes you actually Mark feel like a little just, thief yeah, you're gonna I'm be part of the thieves guild huh <laughs> yeah Actually, you, know, <laughs> you know, everyone everyone has their own path. What is happening take. to the map? It's having a exciting. disco party. And obviously, this is the thing that I was talking about last uh, month that I thought was really cool, and he's made some adjustments to it too, which I think is just really it's great to see and uh, probably helps design a lot in regards to. Oh yeah, she made it speed up. Yeah, I mean the des the design team has been doing a, a great job, um, and and honestly, like. One of the things I love about, you know, working with designers as opposed to engineers or artists is that like, you know, they're constantly thinking I'm all the alternate design. ways, yeah, exactly, all the, all the alternate ways at which these intents diverge, you know, and what directions they could potentially go and, and how, you know, you want to engage hmm. with the player, not just on the fundamental idea of immersion, but from a mechanical standpoint, you know, what are the ways players are going to game the system because we're players ourselves and how can we ac account for those potential gamings of the systems, you know? Steven um, will game the system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's a very important aspect whenever you, you're discussing system design is, you know, if you have that experience and you're a gamer and your mind works that way, that's good because you already have a leg up on your on your community in the sense that you can predict certain things. Now, obviously, you can't not predict everything. Not everything, man. And, they and, will no, no, be I know. playing a lot obviously, more hours. <laughs> uh, obviously, you cannot predict everything. But, um, you know, if you can go through and identify a lot of this stuff as part of your design work, um, that's a super important thing. And so, as you all yeah. know, nodes are kind of the core heart of everything. Like, ev almost every system touches it. So it's very important for us to solidify everything, make sure that, you know, everything's... Mm -hmm kind of going in the direction that they want. A lot of the stuff that you have probably experienced during Alpha was data collection and seeing how that process works and how they integrate with our quests coming online, uh, new nodes unlocking, that kind of stuff. So um, now it's going to be the next level. This node system looks really promising. And it's actually one of the main reasons I'm drawn to the game. This ever-changing world where it's completely different than other people's experiences. That's really fun. That's a fun idea for me as a content creator is that I can make content that other content creators might not even have access to. So I don't know. That's a really appealing thing to me. And I think it would make it really fun for other players as well. Overall, this is a really cool example.